When the movie begins, we watch Abru. She is a university student who comes to a house for her paranormal activity research. In the house, some people are trying to extract a jinn from a woman, and the exorcist's name is Farouk Hoja. Then we see Abru recording everything, where she explains that there is a 1,300-year-old jinn who has taken control of the girl, and now Hoja will try to remove the jinn from the girl's body. As Hoja recites some verses from the Quran, the girl starts behaving strangely. Hoja asks the jinn in the name of Allah to leave the girl's body, but the jinn starts cursing everyone and goes out of control, but Hoja manages to control it. In the next scene, Hoja takes a brew with him to the possessed girl's room. She records Hoja performing the exorcism, and after a while, the girl recovers. Hoja shows a brew some strange objects that came out of the woman's mouth. After that, Hoja warns the whole village not to practice black magic on anyone, or else they will face dire consequences. Abru thinks that Hoja is a fraud and there are no jinns, so the next day she goes to Hoja's house for further investigation and sets up cameras in his house. Then she calls Hoja a fraud and challenges him to show her the same strange objects he showed her earlier, which came out of the possessed woman's mouth. But Abru still doesn't believe and says she will only believe when Hoja cures the patient she mentioned. Abru then hands over her cousin Kubra's case file to Hoja, which involves incidents of jinn possession. They both set off on a journey to Kubra's village. As night falls, they stop their car and ask some people for directions to the village. Upon hearing the village's name, the person they asked suddenly attacks them. After that encounter, they find themselves standing on a deserted road, where they hear a woman's crying sound coming from the fields. They follow the sound but are attacked by a red-eyed entity. They quickly retreat to their car and resume their journey. Nearby, they find a tree adorned with numerous dolls, and the number 7175 is written on it. As they continue, they meet a local guide who informs them about the path to Kimbledeer Village. However, after traveling for a while, they notice the same guide walking with an eerie entity. Abru and Hoja finally reach Kubra's house, where they meet Rafika and her daughter. Rafika's sister Fatima arrives and starts arguing asking them to turn off the camera. During dinner, Kubra's mother explains that Kubra got possessed on the day of her wedding. They then play a video of the wedding, showing everyone happy and the celebration going well. Suddenly, Kubra's condition deteriorates, and she becomes possessed by a jinn. She grabs a knife and fatally stabs her husband, causing chaos at the wedding. When Hoja investigates Kubra's possession, he finds out that Kubra kept repeating the number 7175 while she was possessed. The family reveals that Kubra had run away from home to that particular tree on the night of her possession. Later, Hoja investigates the house and spots Kubra standing near the window. Kubra and Abru meet again, and Hoja starts asking Kubra some questions about that night. Kubra's mother then explains that the police took Kubra away on her wedding day, and she remained in a mental hospital for two years. Hoja then focuses his attention on Kubra and performs a ritual to prepare for her exorcism. He sprinkles some liquid on her hand, and when Kubra brings her hand close to her mouth, the ground starts shaking, and she becomes possessed again. Hoja places a piece of cloth on her and touches it with his hand. After a while, some writing appears in blood on Hoja's hand, and he translates it to mean mirror. The next day during breakfast, something comes out of Abru's mouth that appears to be hair when closely examined. In the evening, Abru explains on camera that Hoja will perform some rituals in a room with a mirror to try to make contact with the jinn. Hoja starts the ritual with a black scarf and suddenly the scarf is removed from him and the room becomes brighter. The mirror shatters and a symbol is formed in the corner of the room. Hoja explains that the symbol is related to a toilet spell, which indicates that someone has performed black magic in the house's toilet. With this information, Hoja enters the house's toilet and starts tearing it down, revealing many creepy objects, which disturbs Refika. Among the objects, Hoja finds a creepy doll, and to everyone's shock, a cow's head is inside it. After discovering these objects, Hoja's health deteriorates significantly. He places all the creepy items in one place and begins to open the ones related to dark magic. Hoja finds a spell with Refika and her husband's names written on it. He explains that the curse was placed on Kubra when she was born, causing her to be cursed and stating that once she turns 23, a dangerous jinn will take control of her soul. They realize that Kubra turned 23 on her wedding day, and that's when the curse began to take effect. Just then, Kubra returns, once again possessed and acting abnormally. Hoja initiates her exorcism on a farm, threatening the jinn to leave Kubra's body. Hoja sets the spells from the toilet on fire, causing an earthquake, and the jinn is forced to leave Kubra's body. Everyone is relieved and thanks Hoja. However, during the night, Kubra gets possessed again, comes out of her room and attacks Fatima with a knife, injuring her. Later, they find Kubra near the evil tree, standing inside a circle. The jinn speaks through Kubra, boasting that even if Hoja kills him a thousand times, he will keep coming back. 
After this encounter, Abru accuses Hoja of being a fraud and leaves in anger. The next day, Hoja meets the injured Fatima, who reveals that Kubra's father, Bilal, used to be poor, but suddenly became wealthy. Only one person knows the secret behind this, a man named Ilyas from Kimbledeer Village. The next night, Hoja starts the journey to Kimbledeer Village with Abru. After wandering through the village, they eventually find Ilyas's house, and to their surprise, Ilyas turns out to be the same guy they met at the beginning of the movie. Hoja inquires about Kimbledeer Village, and Ilyas reveals that a long time ago, the entire village was destroyed because of two people, one of whom was Kubra's father, Bilal, and the other was Abru's father, Ramiz. Abru becomes distressed upon hearing this. Ilyas explains that Bilal and Ramiz sought the help of a powerful jinn named Sarah to unearth a treasure from the land of Kimbledeer. After retrieving the treasure, they buried Sarah under the evil tree. As a result of their actions, the angry jinn from Sarah's tribe killed both Bilal and Ramiz. Ilyas shows them pictures of the cursed children born after that incident, and they appear quite creepy. He further reveals that his wife is also a jinn and that he had to move both of them from that house. They both head back to their car, and Abru is troubled by the sight of blood on the vehicle. They then read in a book that if they remove Sarah's gin from the tree and bury it somewhere else, the curse may be broken. Hoja performs the ritual. They see smoke rising from the ground where Sarah was buried, confirming that the gin is gone. Back at the house, Kubra's mother and sister lie to Hoja, saying that an urgent call required him to leave, even though they were holding Abru back. Later that night, Abru finds a spell hidden in her clothes with a picture of herself and Kubra on it. Then, Hoja realizes the meaning of the number 7175, which translates to, I am alive. He understands that jinns who are alive use this number as proof of their existence and that Sarah was trapped in the earth but not dead. The book Hoja read mentioned that if a dead jinn is brought back to life, the curse is lifted, but if a living jinn is released, it becomes even more powerful. Ilyas arrives and accuses Hoja of setting the jinn free claiming that he has done something terrible. He warns Hoja that Abru's life is in danger and reveals that Kubra's mother and sister have performed black magic on Abru. They plan to transfer Sarah's jinn from Kubra's body to Abru's body. Meanwhile, in the house, they capture Abru and take her along with them. Hoja rushes to find Abru and arrives at the house to witness Fatima being attacked. He discovers the spell to bury Abru alive. As he searches for Abru, he sees creepy things and falls inside a well where he is confronted by the Rafika and her daughter who had pushed Haja in the well. Haja warns them that Allah will punish them but they throw stones at him until Hoja dies. Rafika confesses that Abru's father Remzi kept the money for himself and used black magic on Kubra, causing her years of suffering. Now she plans to sacrifice Abru to transfer Sarah's jinn and make Kubra suffer until the end. With these revelations, they proceed to perform the dark ritual and bury Abru alive in a coffin. Abru screams for help from inside the coffin, but no one comes to her aid. And on this haunting and dark note, the movie ends.